Welcome back to Wendy's Workshops. This is Teaching Preschoolers Numbers and Sets 0 to 10, Part 2. In Part 1, we showed activities for numerals 0 to 5 that teach numeral recognition and differentiation, number and set recognition, and numerical order. We are using patterns and activities from Number and Shape Art and Paper Plate Math 1, published by wendysbookworks.com. The consistent elements for each numeral are an unembellished num numeral, a ring that holds items depicting a set for that numeral, a picture showing that number of people or items, and a completed number project from Number and Shape Art. The rest of the pages include a variety of other projects using mixed media like collage, paint, crayon, as well as stickers and rubber stamps. Try to create at least three pages, <coughs> practicing a skill or a concept three times integrates that knowledge more securely into the core knowledge base. The consistent elements allow a child to compare and contrast. Other activities engage a wider, wider field of senses and intelligences, creating new links to core knowledge that suit that particular child. You may find your child would like to do 10 pages of a particular number. That's great. That just sets it better into its knowledge base, into his knowledge base. <clears throat> so here we have our number six, our <clears throat> a hexagon cut out of paper number with numbers on it. We have a little six inch ruler. We've um, also used clocks and things like that or from around the house that have numbers on them. We have a set of six snowflakes and snowflakes have six sides. Here is our project from Number and Shape Art. And because it talks about insects having six legs, we have a little uh, insect book up here. And we've used butterflies from a teacher's store to count numerical order. One, two, three, four, five, six. We think we know what that numeral is, but if we look up, if we pick up the wing, yes, we can see three dots telling us, yes, that, that was correct, that was a three. This is a one, yes, there's a one dot. Our mixed media for the number six is crayon resist on crayon. And so this is a, we scribbled the color underneath, colored it over with the black crayon. And then when we use a bobby pin or something to scratch the uh, black crayon off, the, the bright colored sixes pop out. Here we rubber stamped around the page and then we took a marker and enclosed sets of six. So it doesn't make any difference how many butterflies or ladybugs or whatever it is. As long as it is six things in the set, it is a set of six. And this is an important concept for them to pick up um, and, it's, and, it's, and it's great when they can just pick it up in a subtle way. Here are, is the word six with little sticky letters from a scrapbook store. Number seven, we used uh, rubber bands from a desk. Here we just counted on things. They do not have a number on them, so they could go in any form, and we're just counting them on and taking them off. A little um, pipe cleaner here. Here they have a number on them, so they have to go in a particular order. So this gives them the difference between just counting and counting in a particular order. The number seven project refers to seven days in a week. So we found a little calendar in an activity book, which uh, we can now look at numbers up to 31. And uh, we have a little count strip book. So we just cut the strips and I can count to two and I pull it up. Yes, there's two hearts. I can count to five. When I pull this up, yes, there's five hearts underneath. So we have a little counting book, also in numerical order. 
Our mixed media is lacing. We can lace up the middle. We can lace around the edge. We can do a spiral lace from edge to edge. They're being held in a pocket, paper plate pocket from paper plate math one. And we have sets of seven, uh, seven little bugs, I believe. They are also in our pocket. Number eight in nature <coughs> um, often refers to two animals the kids are, are uh, familiar with. One is the octopus so that has eight legs. So here we have our eight little fishy items hanging up here. We have sets of eight fish and we have our picture of eight people. And kind of sticking with the water theme, we have, we decided to use pirates. So we cut the eight out of pirate paper. We have eight treasure chests. And here we have our treasure beads. Now these beads are from US Toy and Construction Playthings and uh, they're online and when you cut the string of beads anywhere along the line it does not break and fall apart. So we have eight green beads, eight gold beads, and eight purple beads. And we have eight pirate stickers each taking an inch on an eight inch ruler. <clears throat> the second animal, of course, is a spider. They're usually familiar and interested in spiders. And we have uh, an octagon cut out of spider web paper. For our mixed media, we use a sponge shaped like a spider to sponge paint all over our eight. And we found these cute little cutouts that we could lace together for uh, numerical order. And they, they stay in their little web pocket when they're not being uh, taken out and counted and laced and unlaced. For number nine, we found, we went to a magazine, we found pictures of nine things. We found nine, numeral nines that we could put in a set. Um, and we have our nine jingle bells. Our project was a flower with nine petals. And for this, we just uh, did rubber stamping all over a yellow piece of paper and then cut sets of nine. And in this case, there were nine, uh, five sunflowers and four tulips. So I said, oh, we have five sunflowers and four tulips. Five and four make nine. And here, this one got cut out in sets of three. So I took advantage and said, well, three and three and three all add up to nine. We're not really teaching the concept, but we're giving them subtle references for later. This is a, a laminated a piece of paper here, and they can use the wiki sticks. So they, this, the wiki sticks will stick to the laminate and so they can make the number nine. They can write the word nine and this is fingerprinted painted nine. You'll notice I have extra pages for nine and that's because the six and the nine are so similar. There's a lot of confusion for young children, um, especially when in, uh, in a lot of materials, the six, the nine is given a curve at the bottom and if you just turn it upside down it looks like a six or a nine. It's hard to tell the difference. So um, again we've used embellished paper. This actually has a print design on it and when we color over it with the crayon uh, you can see the flower design show up but it gives the, the kids a real feel for the shape of the, of the number nine. Here we've used uh, cardboard and you can see to, to print. Now this is the way it should look, the number nine, but in order to make a print we have to use it on the back side. So we paint the back side and then turn it over and print. Now for the kids this is just like magic. I mean it, we, they, you know, we're saying this is backwards and when we turn it over it print and it comes out right. That's like amazing. So, um, so they love to do this type of project. You can also do it with bubble wrap. And what it tells them subtly 
at a physical level is when if they are having reversal issues, when they look at it and they know it's wrong, they remember they just have to flip it over to make it look correct. Our next number is 10, and this is the other critical number along with zero. Zero is our first critical number because, of course, it, has, it holds nothing. It has no set. And 10 is our next critical number because now our one has moved over into the tens place. And it really represents 10. So every time I do this with these kinds of numbers, the, ten, the one in the tens place has 10 dots to indicate that its value is 10. So we follow the same uh, idea. We have our ring and our picture with people. Here's our project from the Number and Shape Art book. And again, I put 10 dots on the one in the tens place. And being a California company, we couldn't pass out hanging 10. So we have our little surfboards and our 10 toes hanging 10. And we, here we have just a group page, we have 10 items, we have the word 10 in the sticky letters, and we have sets of 10 up here in the little turtle pocket. So when we're talking about 10, what I tell the kids is that 10 always travels with a friend. So in this case, 10 is traveling with 0, and we call it number 10. When 10 travels with 1, we call it 11. Now if we turn these over, they look the same. But because of where this one is, when he's traveling and he's leading the parade to the left, he carries 10. And this one carries 1. So we have 10 and 1 is 11. When What I explain to the kids is 10 carries 10 things in its bag. 10 always travels with a friend. So when tra 10 travels with 1, it's 11. When 10 travels with 2, it's 12. When 10 travels with 3, it's 13, etc. All numbers after 9 travel with friends. All numbers travel to the left, and the leader has the most in his bag. If your child begins to understand this concept of place value, at this level, it will make the rest of uh, his math in school so much easier. I'd also like to show you a puzzle. This is a great puzzle by Melissa and Doug. I like it because it starts with zero and goes to 20, and you have lots and lots of numerals. Um, it's great to be able to use the numerals just on the puzzle, but uh, one of the ways I also use it is to take the numerals off and we make bigger numbers. Small children are fascinated with bigger numbers, and the more they see them and hear their names, the more it puts at a subtle level the fact that Numbers have names and a place, and that name has to do with its place. So, for instance, this is a nine in the hundreds place, a six in the six, uh, 60 place, and a five in the ones place. So this is 965. And as they lay out numbers for you to read to them, that just gets ingrained at a subtle level. Thank you for joining us. Check in with our, our future um, videos. We will be doing 11 through 20. And go check out our website, wendysbookworks.com, and uh, take a look at the Number and Shape book and Number and Math, um, Paper Plate Math book one. Thank you.